Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Gravity Falls, Season 2, Episodes 11 through 15, which is where we get the bombshells dropping. Yes, yes we do. I mean, I had ideas, I had theories about the machine and what would happen when it was activated and yeah yeah but not a brother apparently you thought a family member but not a brother no i didn't think brother which i should have and twins tend to run in families so that also makes sense mm -hmm. especially since there have been hints throughout the first throughout the first season and the beginning of this season that it was a twin brother yeah. Can we say it went right over my head? <laughs> Apparently. Because I was wondering why you weren't like really telling me any theories about that out loud. Because I have to be careful about what I theorize because sometimes you let things slip. And the episode 11, that was the one I got spoiled on. The moment when Mabel let go and said, I trust you, is the part I accidentally came across channel surfing. So now everyone knows why I didn't think Stan was such a bad guy. <laughs> No matter what he did. Because mm -hmm. if Mabel trusts you, you must have at least a good heart. Maybe not the most honest heart, but... You have some redeeming values. For in that situation, to go with your great uncle instead of your twin brother, mm -hmm. th there's some serious stuff there. And this is where the rift starts. Yes. Because they are now... Mabel and Dipper are starting to be divided. Not to mention the rift in reality, and that Stanley and Stanford are not really making up. I basically brought you back for the dead, and you have no thanks to give? Hey. Really, you're not going to thank me for this? Okay, yeah, I know it's my fault you kind of fell in there, but I tried to make it right. Uh, why are you not giving me a chance? So we're skipping a little, which is okay because the two episodes tie together very strongly. The countdown timer, it's interesting that Stan's watch and McGucket's laptop had the same countdown. So I don't think that the laptop was counting down to the catastrophe I'm worried about <laughs> and the catastrophe that they hinted at at the end of the party episode. So I think somehow the laptop was in sync with the machinery under the mystery shack. Mm -hmm. So it was reacting to the fact that the machine was active. Though McGucket kind of blew my theory that he's getting more and more normal and putting on a show for other people with the, come on, get in the bag, raccoon wife. <laughs> okay, so you'll eat a talking pig, but you'll marry a raccoon? Well, remember someone married a woodpecker. Yes, but that was legal in Gravity Falls. I don't know. They didn't say anything about it being illegal. No, but I'm just saying, what's the differentiation between one animal versus another in terms of... Hmm, that's a valid point. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the gravity anomalies and how Stan used that to his advantage is like, he is stalling for time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. He's like, just 45, can we wait like a minute 30, like 45 seconds? 15, nope, you're going out of here. One, two, smile. No, you're going somewhere. <laughs> yes, and once again, Stan proving that he can be pretty kick tail. Mm -hmm. He proves that a lot in a couple episodes in this. Except when his brother beat him down right as he got out of the portal. Though, I gotta say, Stanford probably had a lot of practice keeping himself alive in those other dimensions. Yes. I'm sure that he did. And also, you have to wonder, now that we know that they're twins, going back to earlier memories and flashbacks, the boxing. Yeah, it doesn't quite match up, because Stanford was never shown, especially in, in the Tale of Two Stands episodes, the memories of how Stanley acted doesn't compare to how his memories in the episode uh, where he went into his mind match up. Because even in that early episode, he's shown as one of the tough guys, a person who's more likely to be tough. But in the memories we saw in the episode where Bill was in his brain, show a very different Stanley. So some people theorize that that's actually him 
remembering his brother being that way and not himself being that way. Yeah, because also the Stan in the Bill Cipher memory episode wore glasses. Mm -hmm. Stanley doesn't wear glasses in the backstory, you know, fill in episode until he takes Stanford's glasses and pretends to be Stanford. And we know that Stan, I have to say Stanley and Stanford so much, it's going to get confusing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the imposter version, the non-genius, one with five fingers, mm -hmm. can fight. So I can't imagine that the father would pay for two sets of boxing lessons. So I would think he just paid for one set and switched the boys out. Because with the boxing gloves on, you wouldn't see the number of fingers. I mean, they are twins, and both of them can be called Stan for short. Yeah, but a clue I didn't point out to you because I wanted to see if you saw it yourself is in the background, there's actually a kid reading something that looks a lot like Stan. It, he's, his face is covered, but you can see part of his hair and other identifying features that make him look a lot like Stan. So that's when people started theorizing that there were two Stans. Hmm. Yeah, I had other things to think about during that Bill Cipher episode. Like, Bill Cipher! <laughs> <laughs> but it also helps explain how some of the memories don't match up. Because in the boy band episode, when Stan has that memory flashback of losing his girl to 60s music... He's not wearing the glasses. He looks more... Yeah, he looks like he even matches a memory. He even matches the backstory that they give in The Tale of Two Stands. The, specifically when he's driving off me and he gets kicked out and during the scene where he accidentally breaks a perpetual motion machine. Mm -hmm. He looks just like that in the memory. The one where his girl gets stolen. Mm -hmm. It matches perfectly. Yeah, along with when they were at the prom together and he got the punch spilled on himself and then his brother came over and spilled the punch mm -hmm. on himself. So I'm thinking because they're twins, their memories may be a kind of linked as well. So they may actually view their shared memories as their own. Entirely possible. Because too much effort went in this into the series for all of this to be accidental. Mm-hmm. Especially since the creator said he had this all planned out from the start. Mm-hmm. Before you even got approved for the series. Well, it's it's a good idea to have your ending point planned out so that you don't end up with something like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, 50 million movies later. I think this was called Dragon Ball Super or something. I have no idea. Yeah, there's currently a season of Dragon Ball going on. From what I heard, it's pretty good, but I'm still like, I'm Dragon Balled out. <laughs> yeah, like. How do we keep doing the same thing over and over and it still is interesting? Here's an interesting fact about this particular series. The author of the manga was never directly involved in the other series until GT and he came in after the series was launched and he had no approval about it whatsoever. He found it on TV. He was watching TV one day and went, wait a minute, I didn't approve this. So even before that, he approved the other series, but he was never directly involved in them. This one, he's actually apparently directly involved in the script writing, series planning, and everything. Hmm. Well, that might make it a bit more interesting. So, yeah, Stanley and Stanford not getting along, a reason to be in Gravity Falls, he's mm -hmm. tracing the anomalies, that's why he went there is because of all that weird stuff, and a reason for the mystery shack. Stan tried all these other, you know, lie, cheat, and steal schemes. I love the ShamWow reference. Mm, I also love how all the names of the products were, it's a sham. It's a ripoff. It's a racket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it was really fun because we saw when he had Stan back, you know, this vacuum sucks. It was really funny. And then... He learns the same thing that Dipper learned. Oh, real stuff freaks people out. But if you make it gimmicky, they're okay. 
Yeah, though this also means that the townsfolk who live in Gravity Falls know Stan as the science guy who runs the Mystery Shack. Because they asked, are you the science guy who does all those weird experiments in his shack? I would love a tour of that place. I would pay money for a tour of that place. And he's like, really? <laughs> yeah, it says he's standing there unable to pay for a 99 cent loaf of bread. Which gives us another stamp of being able to pin it in the timeline. Price of a loaf of bread. Mm-hmm. We also know Seuss's age and the date of that, so that can give us some more stuff. This will be a lot of stuff for if we had the time to really sit down and really pinpoint the exact times and dates and everything. Though probably someone out there already has, but it would be fun for us to do, except time. <laughs> yeah, because so, it's interesting because when Stan goes to pick up that loaf of bread, the shopkeepers are still alive. But you can tell they're not going to be alive for much longer because if you look at the teenagers that are hanging outside the shop, it looks very 90s rap music. I also like how they make fun of the 90s in the show a lot. Like, that must have been a horrible period to go through. Yes, when everything was extreme. <laughs> uh, yeah, literally everything. Including Disney. Or they added the word not to something for the heck of it because not was a popular term for kids in that. Instead of saying no, they would go not or something along those lines. So I had a BMX not. Ah, so you had a BMX ripoff. Apparently. <laughs> but it was a good bike. Also, the fact that Stan is technically responsible for Lazy Susan having her eye like that. Interesting. Also interesting that she's still interested in him all those years later. Yeah, and that just hit me. Actually, they may not remember that he's the science guy. Remember their memories are a little messed up because of all the times everyone in the town has been hit with the memory racing gun? So, they may not remember any of that. Yeah, the only person who remembers, which is probably how he keeps shamming people, is Stan. Because he manages to keep taking the locals again and again. And we theorized that a little bit earlier that the memory ray was making them a bit more susceptible. Also, I love that we were able to use the memory ray to get rid of the government agents. Mm-hmm. I love the, um, give me your A-tracks and cassette tapes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right thing, right? As he's holding a bunch of Mabel's drawings. Yep. Pretending they're a report. So what do you think of Stanford so far? Well, he's the nerdy one. So, I mean, in the flashback episode it's hard because it's like okay i can see where they had this falling out and i can understand being hurt and everything and that's the side that we see at first is you know this dangerous mysterious super intelligent person but then we get to the D D and d episode ah i was wondering when you were going to mention that episode oh uh, well i needed to talk more about these first two episodes also interesting that stanford got to see the shapeshifter hatch so it's like so why was it locked up was it causing problems or was it small and cute and he took it home and then oh my god mm -hmm. i want to ask you a question about the d d and d episode yes do you remember anything about it outside of us actually watching it now? I'm going to see how well your memory is for something we've experienced. Hmm, I want to ask you, who voiced the math guy, the probability wizard? I'll give you a hint. We went to his concert recently. The clip was even in the concert. Ah, uh, wow. I am an idiot. Leave that in. I am an idiot. Wow. No, then I tend not to pay that much attention to voice actors beyond yay or nay mm -hmm. because I don't want to be distracted from the character that they're voicing because mm -hmm. I've noticed that happen. If I focus too much on the voice actor, I have a disconnect from the storyline. Ah. Had it happen with Lion King. It was very annoying. Oh, uh, Simba's father? Yes, James Earl Jones. Huh, interesting. So, shall we say the name so the audience knows? Oh, I'm sure the audience has Googled it by now. <laughs> Weird Al Yankovic voiced the mathematician wizard. Wow. Yep. Couldn't tell, could you? No. Obviously not. <laughs> yeah, there's only a couple of spots where you actually hear Al's actual voice come through the character. It's only if you're paying, really paying attention to it, too. It, 
when he kind of drops the highness, he goes into his usual range, and then he comes back out of it really quickly. He didn't even realize it's him, and he does a really good performance in this episode. Yeah, well, when we got to this episode, I was going to say how much I liked that character. <laughs> and now you know why. One of the reasons. Because it's not just a voice actor, it's well written. Because, mm -hmm. like, we're still playing by the rules of the game. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, I out here in the world and I'm going to use real magic and stuff. It's like, no, we still have to roll for it and we still have to do probabilities and graphs and everything. I love how you had to roll to see what they were going to do. You're going to roll. I can't remember what he actually got, but... I believe it was Snivel. Snivel. Snivel before him. And wow. And that's another one for Stan causing the issue because he had the bag of dice, but Stanford's fault for the incredibly dangerous infinite-sided dice that's protected by a cheap plastic case being mm -hmm. in the bag of holding. Everyone's going, no! Well, not everyone, but Dipper and Stanford are going, no! I'm like, oh, great. This is happening. Oh, yeah, we're the smartest ones, so you're going to send us on a quest? No, you're the smartest one, so I'm going to capture you and kill you. Dang. <laughs> Someone finally appreciates our intelligence, and they're going to kill us over it. I need our brain. Brains. Plural. You know, since there's two of them. Yes. And then when Dipper and Ford are explaining in the heat of the moment to Mabel and Stan, no, imagination and luck. It's like lying. It's, oh, we make stuff up? Oh, that's something I can get behind. Lying? That's something I... Okay, we got this. Yeah, it was basically like... um. It was a game of chance and use your imagination. And Mabel goes, I got imagination. And Stan goes, I'm good at chance. Yeah. Also, I love the subtle hint that they give you that Stan's going to cheat. He starts chewing a stick of gum before the game even starts. He actually starts chewing it right when he realizes he's going to have to start rolling dice. Yeah. But what I appreciate about Stan's ability at that point is that's a 38-sided die. And he was able to correctly calculate where to place the gum to get the one out of 38 numbers that he needed. Mm-hmm. Because normally in Vegas you have six-sided die. Mm-hmm. Two of them, actually. Yes, but still. Much less to manipulate. Also different balance, different size, different weight. Mm -hmm. Different vectors for how it bounces based on the sides. I love their, the weapon choices of Grinda, Stan, and Mabel. Mm-hmm. Grinda. This works! <laughs> and it did very well, because the ogre was going to do the whole questions three, and Grinda's like, nope! <laughs> and I love, Mabel's like, is he going to be okay? And Stan's like, of course he is. He's a fantasy creature. There are no cops out in the woods. We take this to the grave. Wink. <laughs> Nod. <laughs> Wow. I mean, you always thought Grenda was hardcore, but yeah. And also another children's show episode of, oh, isn't this every gamer's dream for the game to come to life? Yeah. And no. And speaking of games coming to life, Zeus. <laughs> yeah. I love how at the end, the griffin... How did the griffin not get banished? Yeah, I think the griffin did. I think that actually happened during what was going on. Because remember, Zeus leaves at that one point. So he's going to go into his grandma's backyard mm -hmm. and finish playing. I think the credit scene is actually taking place during what's going on with Stan and family. All right, could be then, because... Otherwise, the griffin should be gone. Because it's the same griffin. Not that Gravity Falls can't have a griffin. And I love how token the hot elf is. He's actually called Hot Elf. Mm -hmm. And he's like, ho oh, hum. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't even time for Mabel to crush on him. <laughs> yeah, Grinda was hugging him and the elf was like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and poor Grinda, she's like, oh, he left. He disappeared. Why does this always happen to me? Like, whoa, Grinda, like, two episodes ago, you got the phone number of the Prince of Austria. 
Okay, I admit, depending on your personal taste, the elf might be more attractive. But come on, you discard a phone number for a prince versus a dark elf ranger. I also love Stanford's my ears. <laughs> They're all pointy. <laughs> and Dipper's, God, I hope there's some protection underneath this. Turns around, God, there's no protection underneath this. This really sucks. Yes, yes, it does. Oh, uh, awesome battle sequence and so fun, except for the part where you actually have to worry about dying. And what is it with villains wanting to eat the hero's brains? Second time now. Are we counting Zeus? We're counting zombies in general. Oh, okay. Zeus uh, at least asks permission, but the zombies in general. Mm. And just how they even made fun of the whole twin thing in that episode with Duck Detective of... Oh my god, that was the twist? He had a twin brother? Lame. Rip off! I mean, really, come on. This is the answer? I love Seuss again. I predicted this a long time ago. I predicted this like a year ago. And going back to Seuss, okay, if this story doesn't match my fanfiction, I'm going to be incredibly disappointed. <laughs> I think this season was written during the first season when it was blowing up. So it gave them a chance to really put in a lot of Inside jokes. Yeah, and a lot of self-referencing and fandom referencing mm -hmm. items. And poor Wendy. Wendy, I need you to set aside 14 hours. <laughs> Suze, it's 3 a.m. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Okay, so act two. <laughs> uh, also, we haven't seen a lot from her this season yet. Well, we saw a lot from her in the first couple episodes, but I'm saying these, next, these last five, we didn't see a lot from her. Yeah, she really wasn't involved in this set of five. Is the Mystery Shack is closed for repairs, so she's not reporting to work. Mm -hmm. Dipper's staying at the Mystery Shack because, oh my god, the author. Oh my god, I'm related to the author. Oh my god, I have so many questions. What do you mean I can't talk to him? What do you mean he won't talk to me? Well, one, Stanley told him to stay away from you kids and keep you safe. And two... He should be doing that because stuff is dangerous. And it's kind of awesome that he took the portal down. That that's what he was hiding behind the curtain. It's like, okay, that's not the big secret that you dismantled the portal. Okay, that you have this contained anomaly. That's more of a secret. But you're not telling everything. Even to Dipper. And the division continues because now... Stanford is asking Dipper to keep secrets from Stan and his own twin sister. So the rift widens. Yep. And oh my goodness, the idea of Stan as mayor. Yeah. Not nearly as terrifying as I thought it would be. I think he would have actually been a pretty good mayor. He would have lied, cheated, and steal, but the town would have actually been run pretty good, I think. Probably. And also... Politician? Sounds about right. <laughs> Except for the whole fact that he's not very good at it. N not at that level and that type. Mm-hmm. They made a references to a lot of politicians. Oh, yeah. And the return of Gideon. And how both the air quotes good and air quotes evil sides were using possession. Mm-hmm. And I love how Stanford just kind of like, oh, yeah. Here's a tie. It can do this thing. Don't do anything bad with it, though. Goes back to his work. <laughs> yeah. Like, you do realize what they're going to use it for because Dipper told you that Stan was running for mayor. So you know exactly what was going to happen by giving Dipper that tie. Exactly what was going to happen was Stan was going to be elected mayor. And then Gideon does the same thing with the spell. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Gideon's parents. Mm-hmm. And Gideon getting ready to make a deal with the devil. I don't think he's quite the devil, but that's a good analogy. It's close enough. It's a reasonable analogy based on kind of what we've seen of how the deals always go sour. Though so I'm impressed that he could redraw that from memory, because I don't think he had that page of the book. And if he didn't get it quite right, I'm impressed Bill answered anyways. Because Gideon's in jail. What's he going to be able to do? Yeah, and I don't think at this point Gideon actually needed to draw it to get Bill to show up. Because I think Bill's still in the world. He was never sent back to his dimension. 
yeah, Bill is still on the terrestrial plane. So he didn't need to be summoned from a different dimension. You just had to send up a smoke signal. Mm hmm. I think Gideon could have just said, I'm ready to make a deal, and Bill would have showed up. Mm hmm. But it gives us more reason that he hadn't done it yet that he thought he would have to draw it again. Yes, yeah, so it took longer, and really? You want to tie the kids up and put them by TNT? I know you're in jail, Gideon, but that would probably have killed them. Not trapped them, killed them. Mm hmm. And you're still trying to get Mabel. Oh, yeah, I'll. I'm willing to spare you, Mabel, if you'll be mine. I'd rather die. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay, you just switch from I'm trapping you in a mountain to I'm going to kill you. And Stan, I mean, you knew that was what Stan had to do. The kids are calling for help. You know, I thought originally he was going to have like this heartfelt speech into the microphone of how he was saying sorry to the kids and the audience. You know, the voters were going to hear that. You know, I should have listened to you kids. I didn't mean to hurt you. You were just trying to help. But no, he literally gets to be the hero of the hour because he abandons the debate to go save the children in a whole walking away from an explosion type mm -hmm. set of moves. And I love how the, it's not an eagle, I can't remember the bird's name, but I love how it actually kissed him. Yes, I'm like, that's actually happening. And it was actually an eagle. Hmm. I thought they had a special name for it, so that's Yeah, why it was... was like the mare-picking eagle will bestow a birdly kiss. I'm like, wow, that, I would, I mean, I know it's Gravity Falls, but hey. I also love how the only real reason, if you think about it, that Stanley got disqualified is because it wasn't because of his wrongdoings. I don't think that actually disqualified him. I think the fact that no one properly filled out the paperwork. But there was no mention of the paperwork in the listing that Dipper read off. There was, you must be able to cast a shadow, you must be something else, and you had to literally throw your hat into the ring. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that that was the real reason. I just think it made for better news. Mm -hmm. I love how... The reason she was crying, speaking of news, the newscaster was crying is because we finally have real news. I'm just so happy. You're happy that the guy died. Wow, that's that's cold. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you could always move somewhere else where news actually happens yeah. and start your career over. Yeah, here's the thing. It's more like news that she can actually report and most people would believe. Good point. Because there's news going on in that town all the time. But most of it's tabloid trash equivalent. Mm hmm So are we ready to move on to the RV trip? Ah, uh, yes. Never take dating advice from someone who's single. Yeah. Or someone who's obviously had more, way more relationships and none of them ended well. Yes, because let's remember, Dipper, that you saw that the whole thing play out with Lazy Susan. That he couldn't talk to her. You know, all these couldn'ts, couldn'ts, couldn'ts. So how does that match up with this charismatic, confident ladies' man version that he's trying to play off? So, I mean, yes, be more confident. But, you know, flirting, it can be all in good fun. As long as both sides know that nothing's being serious. Uh, you know, the red flag of, oh, I don't want to act like I'm leading them on. And Stan going, that's what's great about these road trips. You will never see these girls again. Famous last words. <laughs> yes. Though I wasn't necessarily expecting him to run into all of the girls because we had the side tangent of Candy starting to fall for him. And I'm like, that one's going to be a lot more painful than these random girls that we don't know. Because not only is he messing with a regular cast character, he's messing with a friendship between Candy and Mabel. And I love how you paused it at that particular point. And why didn't you tell me about this? I go, all you remember that this episode was about a road trip. <laughs> I'm like, warn a girl. It's like when we skipped most of that episode about Lars being possessed by Steven. Some things are just painful to watch. Yeah, that's one of the tropes that makes us cringe. Yes. We did actually finish watching this, but we had to pause first. So, yeah, but... Dipper, why didn't you write those numbers down in a notebook 
And didn't any of the girls who wrote on you notice mm -hmm. that there were other emails or cell phone numbers written on you? And I half thought he was going to lose the numbers when he was in the hot tub with Stan because he was holding his arms up. I'm like, he's going to forget and drop his arms in the water and lose all the numbers. Then when he runs into them again, they're all going to be mad that he didn't contact them. And he doesn't have the information because he washed up. I could literally hear you as that scene was going, going, uh, uh, <laughs> he's going to do it. You weren't making any noises, but the... It just something about your Demeter was saying, it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. Hey, it didn't happen. <laughs> the show is very good at doing that to me. Ah, yeah, this show is very good at taking tropes and twisting them. Yes, which is probably what made the whole explosion of girls taking Dipper to task a bit more uh, palatable. Mm -hmm. another, thing, uh, another wonderful thing about this episode is uh, how Stan's stuff, his ego and stuff really gets, bites him in the butt, probably quite literally. Yeah, so you play right into the spider creature's claws, and then you fall for it again at the very end. And speaking of the very end... <laughs> My one weakness, a giant foot. Also, a giant newspaper and a giant cup would have worked. <laughs> well, the giant cup would have been less painful because that's how you trap the spider to take it outside. Mm-hmm. You put a cup down, then you slide a piece of paper underneath. Mm-hmm. Works for frogs, too. Hmm. But you have to use cardboard. Ah, I was going to say, isn't like paper a little thin for that? A thin sheet of cardboard. Or slide the paper under and then very gently turn the cup. I've had to take more frogs outside than spiders. These wildlife tips are brought to you by Lux and Ember. We have no idea what we're doing. And, you know, and some things were obvious. Like when Stan says, oh, you know, those pamphlets have never held any piece of useful information. Well, yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. And because you said that, they had to. Mm -hmm. Also, Seuss getting left behind in the corn maze. And you guys get all the way back and you still don't notice? I can't believe all the kids were in, totally in, 100% on vandalizing all these other tourist traps. Well, they're pretty young kids. Also noticed Dipper wasn't really into it, but he got into it. More Grinda and Candy, who were really into it. Because even Mabel was a, uh, not really hesitant, but she didn't jump right onto it immediately. She did do it for the ball of yarn, probably because she thought, that's going to be fun. And then the rest of them, she kind of just had fun with. And speaking of these attractions, that one where you wear Velcro shoes and get turned upside down is not dangerous because you could fall from the ceiling. It's dangerous because if you spend more than 15 minutes upside down, your brain literally disconnects from the rest of your body. And you instantly die. We're not designed to hang upside down. No, we're not. And they even poked at that with Grinda going, or it could just be the blood going to my brain. Mm-hmm. Because, well, that too, blood pools, but you're actually, your brain will actually disconnect from your spinal cord. Not a pretty thing. Also, I heard this on a TV program, so I could be completely wrong. So feel free to double check me on Google. <laughs> yes, because that sounds disturbing and it's not one I've heard before. Not that there aren't plenty of disturbing things out there I haven't heard. But... I also don't understand why Stan didn't think there'd be any retribution. Yeah. These places have pranked him every year. He goes out and pranks all of them. Anything they did in the past was going to be nothing by comparison. Though really, setting his car on fire on two separate occasions, it's a little much yarn ball lady. Mm-hmm. And why would they prank him? Is he doing better business than them? Well, do better business. <laughs> Or does it have to just do with the location on the map? Is it that they hit the mystery shack first? So if he can manage to swindle them out of all their cash, they don't have anything left to spend on the other attractions. Hmm. Could be. Because we did see a map of the different locations. Hmm. It really depends on which way you're coming from, most likely. True. But there tend to be specific travel routes. And if you think about it, at one end is the Mystery Shack and the other end is Mystery Mountain. Twice the size of the Mystery Shack has real 
stuff has better legends. So, yeah, those ones in the middle are kind of stuck, apparently. Yeah, I like new mummies. I don't know. I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah. And then we get later in the episode. Oh, that's how that works. Mm -hmm. You just take the husks of the tourists that you ate and put them on display. Yeah. That is disturbing. Just a little bit. It's like, I, I just suddenly saw someone going, wait, is that Uncle Fred? Yeah, I could see that happening. Mm -hmm. So I think that's all the episodes. Do you have any more on anything for these last five episodes? Uh, that was all the episodes. And we've covered a lot of what came up in our pre-discussion. But one of the things we didn't bring up was Bill Cipher's original summoning by Gideon. It was Stanford that Bill was thinking about. And I'm trying to remember if when Gideon made the deal with Bill, did he say Stan or Stanford Pines? Because at some point, Bill would know the truth because he's Bill Cipher. Mm-hmm. Oh, and speaking of that, and another thing we talked about in the episode where Bill possesses Dipper's body, Dipper asked for help with the laptop. He didn't say the password. So Bill breaking the laptop actually helped him because it stopped it from erasing the hard drive. Because it was broken and because that gave him a clue to McGucket and McGucket started getting his memories back and McGucket fixed the laptop. Mm -hmm. So Bill did hold up his end of the bargain. In a very roundabout way that probably wouldn't have worked if Bill had not been kicked out of Dipper's body because Bill probably would have managed to hold on to the body until he killed Dipper or until it was too late to do anything. But still, technically it was holding up his end of the bargain. Mm-hmm. You would think Gideon would have had to face a penalty for breaking his bargain with Bill because mm -hmm. he said the deal's off. So Bill's not going to be the nicest guy when he shows up in response to Gideon's summons. Not that he's the nicest guy to begin with, but... He's not even a nice guy. He's a, not even a guy, period. So is that your final thoughts, or do you have more? Well, I'm sure more of it will hit me later. It's, it's just, still, watch the episodes almost back to back, but the later episodes still do an amazing job of erasing the earlier episodes from your brain. Because, I mean, the first two episodes, that was so, oh my god. You know, all the machinations to get the machine going. Ending with the return of the author. Then going into the author is Stan's brother, and you guys are all related, and all this backstory. Half of which got erased by the time we were working on the election. Well, at least you've got plenty of theories in your head for the last five episodes. Yes, it, it, it's interesting to know that the part that I saw, you know, I thought I was spoiled so much closer to the finale. That was only episode 11! Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I am out of spoiler territory. I can't, nothing that I saw previously can contaminate these final five episodes. But what the heck is Bill going to do that, oh, God. <laughs> what did you just think? Because it's obvious, Stanford is hiding that contained anomaly. Uh, I have a feeling Bill is going to uncontain it. Hmm. Also, because Ford has said that he's made a lot of powerful enemies, I'm thinking that Bill's going to do a quick roundup of everyone who has a grudge on Ford, hmm. including multidimensional. And hey, let's just throw everything at the Pines family all at one time. Hmm. Can we get another time wish? Because we're going to need that. <laughs> yeah. I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on... Gravity Falls, Season 2, Episodes 11 through 15. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, check out the other Gravity Falls videos if you haven't already. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. You guys know the routine by now. This is YouTube. <laughs> it's not a new thing. If you want to see more of Lux's art, you can check him out on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Want to support a starving artist? Check out his Patreon. Want to leave us a tip? Check out his coffee.